uh, a life out of the space and time continent. Yeah. If if a life is out of the, uh, time and space continent, yeah. Yep. Allah doesn't have future or past or present. Okay. Yeah. So Allah can. That means you know Allah said Allah know everything. Yeah. Okay. So that means. Uh, Allah, it's easy for Allah to see that one because you know he's out, outside the time and space, so he can simply as we see our present, Allah can see the present and the past and the future. There is a question. There, there is actually a statement that's been proposed by um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah, yeah. he says at the at the, sorry at the third part of the night. Yeah. Third part of the night is to yeah. do with time. Full stop. Yeah. Yep. So we're dealing that's with time. For us. That's for us. We're dealing with time right now. Yeah. Allah, uh, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. So, Allah descends, yeah. descends yeah. from seventh heaven all the way down six, five, four, three, two, one yeah. to the lowest heaven, the dunya, this heaven right now. Yeah. Okay, and if you give dua to him or pray to him, okay, he will answer those prayers, right? Yeah. So therefore, he's operating with inside of time. Number one, we make mention of no, and that's space. Not, that's not, that's Giving you an example, if you throw a stone, that's actually gone to the history. It's never going to come back. The time has gone, everything has gone. It's never ever going to come back. Okay. Yeah? Now, if you throw that stone to any different angle, it's never going to come back, apart from the one angle when you do it in, in the earth. Yeah? Okay. That will come back if you throw it exactly into 90 degree upwards. Mm -hmm. Right? So what does it mean is a force of gravity can bring back the history. Would you take it? Would you accept that that promise? So don't worry about this one, just make sure we're in this one. Yeah? Because you're just wide angle, eh? Right, I'm off. Alright. Let's get it, let's get it. Is it recording? Yeah, it is recording. Yeah, let's go. Okay. So you stop. Me stop. Okay, sorry, yeah, I'll stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. All right, let's get it, my brother. Uh, okay. You said you wanted to come here so, uh, and actually have a conversation with me about God. Yeah. So, yeah, so, I'm down. Yeah, this is a description. Uh, I was talking to uh, Kalam before whether God is, exists or not. So, so before God to God, you know, I just want to talk about, uh, I just asked him whether he, you know, does he believe in, um, in Big Bang? Okay. Yeah? Okay. Just think so. So, okay. <laughs> now, let me talk about just the science. Uh, and you know, he said he believe in science only. Without science, he cannot accept anything as a fact or, or, or he don't even believe as a belief or whatsoever, yeah? So this is my point. Science belief, 80% of the scientists believe Big Bang existed. And you agree on that one, yeah? Okay. Right, okay. Uh, at the at time of the Big Bang, time and the space came into existence. Okay. Okay. Now, the, uh, my main argument is this one. If time and space came into existence, let's say an, uh, a, 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 uh, you know, you can call it an entity. An entity existed before the Big Bang. I call it as X. You know, in mathematics, if you want to find out something, okay, you put it as X, yeah? Okay. So just like that one, I put it as X. X did exist before the Big Bang. Okay. Right, okay. Now, let me divert the topic into a little bit, then I'll come back to this one. I'm giving you one example. If you throw a stone, that's actually gone to the history. It's never going to come back. The time has gone, everything has gone. It's never ever going to come back. Okay. Yeah? Now, if you throw that stone to any different angle, it's never going to come back, apart from the one angle when you do it in, in the earth. Yeah, okay. that will come back if you try it exactly into 90 degree upwards, mm -hmm. right? So what does it mean is a force of gravity can bring back the history. Would you take it? Would you accept that, that premise? The force of history can, the force no. of gravity. gravity can bring back history. No, no, no. you don't take it, why? How can gravity now, bring back history? My, That's, my, my history is to do with uh, time, right, okay. not so to do with um, a force. My point is this one. My point mass. is this one. A force can. The time is actually only a concept. Do yeah. me a favor. Do me a favor, brother. Yeah, um, so we can cut the, the, you know, the long prelude. Yeah. Um, what is the exact point you want to get across to me? 
right. and okay. we can go there. Right. Okay. Simply, God, whatever existed before the time and space quantum, that's independent on time and space. Okay. Right. Okay. So, if that entity is dependent on time, I'm taking just one of one part of that one. Mm -hmm. If that entity independent on time, that means that entity did not have a beginning and not have a end. Okay. So it is eternal. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. Now the next point, it that entity independent on space. Okay. It's also independent on space, yeah? Okay. So for human brain, we cannot comprehend anything without time and space. That's science said it's a truth. Yeah? Because if you want to think about something, anything in the world, that must include a space or time. Okay. That must be related to some space or time. So and uh, we're not gonna be able to think anything without time and space. So again, I need to ask you that. So yeah, what is no. your question? What is where do you want to go with this? Right, okay. I'm coming to that one. Now I'm, I will take to God. Where is where is God coming in this this place, yeah? Okay. So the entity, we cannot think about this entity as a god, or oh, sorry, uh, the entity without time. And so we don't have a picture of this entity. We don't have a, a proper idea of this entity. Mm -hmm. You know, how does, how does that entity look like? What's the size of it? And because of it, it depends on, on uh, space. Mm -hmm. If you ask me where is that entity, that's going to be an irrelevant question in the first place because that's independent on the space already. Okay. Yeah. Now this is my. Now if you go to Quran, okay, Quran say about the God exactly the same thing, mm -hmm. which is the 112th chapter, which we discussed earlier. Yep. When they ask about God, say them Kul Hu Allahu Ahad. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely unique. And I'm, let me explain that one. What is unique okay. means in in terms of time and space yeah uh, if you if you if there's an entity before the big bang mm -hmm. which is uh, independent space my premise is this one if if there is two blocks sitting in somewhere mm -hmm. actually a space dividing those two blocks into two if okay. there is no space between these two blocks, uh -huh. that will be one. Okay. Yeah. With you. So if there is no space, mm -hmm. that entity must be absolute unique, conceptually based on space. This is a simple explanation, but if you think in deep, it can go deeper and deeper. But well, what will you do? End of the day, that will be absolute unique. Okay. So, so this is the first explanation of God in mm -hmm. Islam. Allah, you know, kul huwa Allah. Allah mm -hmm. is unique, absolutely yeah. unique, yeah? yeah. Allah Husamad is is endless. You know, uh, he never, you know, uh, he didn't have a beginning and no end. Yeah? I'm not too sure that's what it means, but yeah. I, I, I hear your premise. Yeah. So so that's regarding the time. Okay. So this entity never had a beginning and n uh, doesn't have an end as well, yeah? And the third one, it never begot, you know, he never born. So actually it doesn't come in this one anyway with the time and space. Okay. Uh, he never given birth to anyone okay. and he was, uh, he was never born. Okay. And the last one, there's nothing like him. This actually gives the extra explanation about without space. That means there's nothing like him. That means you cannot comprehend without time and space. There's nothing like him simply means... Right? Okay. <laughs> I'm just reciting um, a sort of yeah. class. There's I've seen nothing like him. Where you're getting that from? Yeah. So uh, oh. there's nothing like him. Simply means you cannot comprehend that entity. How does it look like? Where is it? When is it? Because of b beyond the time and space continent. Okay. Let me jump on to what you're saying because so yeah. far you haven't uh, posed any questions. No. So wait, wait. Let, let me let me let me, let me talk. So yeah, since you haven't yeah. actually posed any questions, yeah. let me actually um, speak with you and actually pose some questions. And uh, there's certain things uh, you've said in there that I don't think I truly. Um, um, you know, I'm not in a line with it. I'm not in congruence with what you're saying. I don't think it actually actually um, makes real sense in the sense of this. You stated before that um, Allah is beyond time and space. Um, but yet, if we go into the Quran and I ask you right now, because you said um, asking where of Allah is an irrelevant question. It's a non, it's a non sequential basically. It doesn't really matter. You, know, you, you can't ask that question because it's it doesn't make any logical sense basically. But uh, if you if that is true. Um, I think most Muslims yeah, will say, when asked, where is Allah, they will say, 
above his throne. That yeah. is a space. That's, that's and then, in the Quran. Quran yes. said, yeah. There you go. And even above that, they will say, where is um, you know, Allah? Where is the throne? Then? Where, where is the throne or where is Allah? It will be above the seven heavens. So it seems as though that Allah is in some form of space yeah. and he does operate in some time of time, full stop. Yeah. So, so far what you're saying about Allah and trying to make it a, um, a, a, a timeless being and, and without space seems to fall short when we actually refer to the Quran about this particular matter. Right, okay. So I don't know what else you wanted to say so, on that. Uh, yeah, my point is this one. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, can, let me continue my last point. Go ahead. Fam. So, in Islam, the yep. concept of God is is different from our other religions. Okay. And with this time space continuum, it's exactly we can actually the concept of God in Islam mm -hmm. we can reconcile uh, with time and space continuum uh, in in science. Okay. I'm not trying to explain science. You know, actually, it's actually it, it did. Okay. You know, so that's why we can try to do, you know, re try to reconcile the science. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's done. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it does. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to say. So, mm -hmm. so if you go to any other religion, they believe, you know, a a a man god something. So if you believe the god is like a man or, or someone in, in a long gown with an umbrella, no, it's not the concept. Okay. Yeah? So in Islam. The concept of God is exactly like this one, which is independent. You know, you can actually give some explanation on this one, which is independent on time and space. Okay. So, if you revise your definition of God, mm -hmm. yeah, like this one, then you maybe agree that attribute which you believe, mm -hmm. which is be before the uh, before the time, uh, before the Big Bang, mm -hmm. with no time and space. Let me just, can that, I just quickly... That would be more or less equal to, you know, more or less something that you can reconcile yeah. with the Islamic concept of God. If, I, if I'm able to quickly stop you there, I don't think that, um, you know, you, you're saying that uh, the God concept in Islam yeah. is completely unique to Islam. And I, I, I won't even argue that point to a great extent. The point that actually I'm going to argue is you say that God is obviously not a man. Yeah. Um, but when we look into the Islamic scriptures, yet again, we actually do find anthropo anthropomorphizing of God with inside of the scriptures. We find that Allah has face. We find that Allah has um, the ability to speak. He has the ability to see. He has the ability to hear. Okay. He has arms. He has hands. He has fingers. He has um, a leg. He has a shin. He has feet. Um, we see all other features that a human being would have. I'm not saying that Allah does is a human being. I'm saying that we see this anthropomorphic uh, description of Allah within inside of the Quran and also within inside of the um, of the hadith culture as well so i don't i don't see yeah. what you're saying to actually align with what the quran is saying right okay uh, like i said if you go to the same exactly the same chapter mm -hmm. it says there's nothing like him okay okay so if you if you think he has got a face like us where, where does, where does it say, this side where does it yeah? say that he's not there's nothing he's nothing like him i'm not saying that it doesn't exist but where exactly what does it say the, the last the last uh, words of uh, 112 chapter Last verse of 112 chapter. Would yeah. you like to, would you be able to recite it? Yeah. Uh, means there is nothing like him. That means you cannot think, you know, Quran says, you know, like, you know, uh, Allah's face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, everything like you said, you are correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More or less. Yeah. But you cannot predict that it's like this. Yeah. So there is nothing like means uh, Allah has got a face. But it's not like you think. You cannot even pray. Allah says, say, you know, there's nothing like his face. Yeah, so you cannot predict this is his faces. Yeah, so you cannot draw a picture in your mind or you can, uh, you know, think an image of Allah. It, it could be like this. You can't do that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now this is the point. If that entity that we were talking about mm -hmm. before the Big Bang, you cannot think about it. Yeah. So why that entity can't be God? That's my question to you now. Okay, the entity before the Big Bang, why can't it be God? Yeah. Um, okay, first of all, we will have to actually define what is God. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times we have these conversations of God, God, yeah, God. Yeah, I've already given you the definition. This is the definition, yeah? Definition the definition is, of God. is... That's you can actually, the definition the time, of God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for the third verse, you can actually ignore for the time being, which okay. is, you know, he, he, he wasn't born and he never gave, 
birth to someone, yeah? You can ignore that one. Okay. The first, uh, Allah, uh, Allah is absolutely unique. Yep. Allah is uh, that means he uh, he never, uh, he never uh, actually, he didn't have a beginning, okay. no end. I, I would say that's and not... the last one, nothing like him. Yeah? That's not really... So that's a definition in Islam, yeah? I, I don't know if that is actually a definition itself. In Islam, um, yeah. I don't think that is a definition. That's what it says, you know, in, in Islamical definition. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm not I, saying it's a definition, universal definition. Okay. Yeah? I'm saying Islamical definition is this one. Okay, because if, we, we, if, it, yeah? if we actually truly break down that definition yeah. and actually question it and really analyze it and be critical of it, um, you know, kul huwa Allahu ahad. So are we saying that he, Allah, is a masculine, he's, he's a man? Uh, in, in our, if you go to, uh, that's a good question. If yeah. you go to Arabic, there's two, you know, uh, huwa, is he mm -hmm. yeah it stands for he actually i'll come to that one he stands for she yeah yep. but who are you can also use for uh you know the transgenders if you want and uh in some cases uh, uh you know like something yeah you can actually use the same for for something and entity or or, or a masculine or like so you say so that this, Allah this could is be actually more suitable word yeah. for Allah in Arabic. So yeah? could Allah be so transgender then? No, 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 no. No, is Allah a he Huwa, then? Actually, you can, in Arabic language, you yeah. can also use for Allah uh, to explain Allah, you know? Okay. So this is a third. In, in English, he means is he must be masculine. Okay. Yeah. Because and she means must be. I think I think yeah? I think that I think that is but really. In Arabic, it's not like that. I think if that's your definition of what Allah is, it falls short. I'm not yeah. saying that the Quran falls short. I'm saying if that's the definition of Allah yeah. that you're proposing, Allah, and Allah doesn't have a gender, by the way. Okay. And if that's the definition you're proposing as the Islamic definition, I'll say the Islamic definition falls short. I'm not saying that the Quran falls short. I'm saying that if that is the definition that most Muslims give or the Islamic world um, produces, I think that definition really does um, fall short. Now, let's actually go into the whole Big Bang model um, real quickly. Um, you talked about um, what produced the Big Bang and so forth. Now, we have certain scientists, um, I'm going to name one just, just from the top of my head, um, Lawrence Krauss, actually. He, he makes mention of the, um, you know, prior to the Big Bang itself, there is something called the quantum field. Other people call it the quantum vacuation. And out of the quantum field, um, this, this um, you know, these uh, particles or, or um, subatomic particles started to actually come into, uh, you know, manifestation or physical manifestation and upset the um, quantum field where all these different forces started to coalesce and actually create something which is known as, I'm using the word create, really it's not create, which caused the Big Bang. So the antecedent of the Big Bang is the quantum field, okay? There is no need for it to be God. I understand how most uh, religious folks actually... Um, uh, put the God concept on the quantum field. Mm -hmm. This seems to me, it seems as though that's what um, most religions are actually doing. Right, okay. uh, according to uh, Lawrence Strauss, like he said, you know, you're right. Yeah. Uh, but quantum field, you know, as far as my understanding, yeah. it's, it's a field. It's already a force. No, it it's, is. A, it's a yeah. field. It's a field where forces, particles, and things of that nature um, are manifest or come out of. So, uh, let me put this in a different way, yeah? Yep. Let me put that one in a different way. Yep. Um, so, uh, between the religious people and, and atheists, I would say, or non-religious non people, yep. they believe, actually, they divert in this point. They, uh, before the Big Bang, religious people believe God existed. Mm -hmm. The non-religious people believe uh, energy existed. Some okay. form of energy. So, you can call it quantum field or whatsoever yeah okay now if you go to science yeah as far as this is my knowledge yeah um, my personal knowledge uh, I'm not at the moment I'm not talking about uh, I'm not talking on behalf of Islam mm -hmm. this is my personal knowledge in science if you mm -hmm. go to physics there is no any single uh, constant when you uh, when you come to energy part in the part of energy there is no any single constant which is independent on time and space. Okay. If you go to thermodynamics, say for example, mm -hmm. uh, all, all the constants are mainly, they, they, they are dependent on time and space. Because, you know, for, for to form a thermodynamic a, a unit, it must mm. be, you know, you need a, a special, a, a, at least a container, or a, a, which is, you know, the pressure which you can include in, in that container, yeah? Okay. 
So if you go to radioactive energies or whatsoever, mm -hmm. again, that's, you need a space to, to produce that radioactive energy. I'm with you. Now, this is the point. The Big Bang, the scientists already, you know, by definition, the universe is, is a mixture of time and space and somebody added matter as well. But okay. simply, the simple definition, universe is a mixture of time and space, basically. Okay. Yeah, if, if you go to any, any articles, you can see that one, yeah? Okay. Now, um, if you go to Big Bang, before the Big Bang, time and space did not exist, as you agreed with me already. Now, this is the point. The energy before the Big Bang must be independent on the time and space again. Yeah. Would you agree on that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Now, as per the universal law, mm -hmm. we don't know any constant, any energy constant, mm -hmm. which is independent on time and space. And even if there is one, one constant, we can, if you, if you, uh, if you're trying to put in a, in a, in a, in a equation, again, that can, that will indep dependent on, on time and space. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Now, this is my argument. If the energy existed before the time, before the Big Bang, mm -hmm. that energy must be independent on time and space. Okay. Okay. Yep. By definition, energy must be dependent on time and space, as we know, because there is no any single constant. So the energy existed before the time and space, before the Big Bang, is not energy. The energy that existed before the Big Bang is not energy. Um, no. Let, let me carry on. Let me give you Force. another example. Yeah. We have a football. Okay. Yeah, the football has a leather and air inside. Okay. You took the air out and you took the leather out. What exists? Okay. There's nothing. Okay. So I so would say the would energy can't be exist before the big bang. All right. So let me actually try to explain this to you then. Yeah, so right. basically, the quantum field, okay, yeah. is something that literally is present right now with us. Yeah. It is the sub um, stratum. Yeah. of everything that exists yeah. in this world yeah. literally the substratum of everything that exists in this world yeah. and when we are measuring time and space depends dependent actually mm -hmm. how you actually qualify what is the universe and um, things of that nature how is space and how it, what is time mm -hmm. now usually when we're speaking of time we're mm -hmm. actually speaking of um, mass or objects with mm -hmm. inside of a space itself mm -hmm. in order for us to tell um, one event from another event mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so what we're saying is prior to there being matter there was never any events as such. Mm -hmm. Meaning you need at least uh, two things to measure um, time. That means, well, you need a conscious mind, number one, to measure time. You also need an object, and then you yeah. need some type of movement as well to measure time. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yep. yeah. So prior to- now, If there is, if both doesn't exist, there is no time, in fact. So, yeah, simply. Yeah. yeah, go on, yeah, carry on. Yeah. So for example, let's just say hypothetically speaking, yeah. if there was a vacuum, yeah. okay, and there was just one particle with inside of the uh, vacuum, mm -hmm. according to, uh, you know, there's different philosophical definitions of time. But mm -hmm. according to that, um, there isn't any, and there is no movement taking place. There is actually no time mm -hmm. occurring during mm -hmm. that time. Yeah. or during that um, event itself yeah. because what it is is a vacuum what it is is a singularity and the, or single thing and there is no movement so yeah. there's no way we can actually tell time itself it's yes. only when uh, two, one or more things or two more things are actually yeah. together mm -hmm. and there is movement mm -hmm. that we say this is one event that's taking place is another event that's taking place and so forth and so forth otherwise mm -hmm. it's just a continuous continuous basically right. so okay. prior to the big bang there was just a continuous continuous mm -hmm. to make if that makes any sense which is the quantum field mm -hmm. and once the actual particle started to come into existence or come out of the quantum field the quantum field is filled with all of the energy all the potential that is to come into existence is already there mm -hmm. it's already there do you feel mm -hmm. me? Yeah. Now, once that comes in, mm -hmm. and there is now a, um, a, a, a um, how can I put it, a, a bang or a, di or a, a diversity that takes place, mm -hmm. that's where we can now actually measure time and space. Mm -hmm. For example, most scientists say that we don't know what happened uh, from a few milliseconds before the Big Bang, mm -hmm. because we're, we're unable to calculate that. Mm -hmm. Because there, there is a blur going on. There isn't any um, time or You're space. You're talking about LSC? Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. Go on, yeah. So, um, so what I'm saying to you is basically that the energy has always existed um, with inside of the quantum field itself. Yeah. The first thing, uh, the first thing regarding this matter, the scientists they are trying to produce uh, like uh, like LHC. Mm -hmm. They are trying this experiment. Uh, this is my understanding on this experiment. Yeah, mm -hmm. LHC. They are trying in somewhere you know in in Switzerland or one of the places. Yeah. Now. 
they are trying to imitate such a they are trying to bring a, a situation mm -hmm. like without time and space yeah, yeah. But the problem here is they are already tr trying this experiment, with experiment within the universe. Mm -hmm. Now this is the problem. You are understanding something. If you if you looking into this exper experiment generally, you are trying to understand something by sitting with inside the thing already more clearly. Uh, if you want to understand about a anything like uh, if you want to understand about a, a moon you can you can go to moon and you can search something in there mm -hmm. but you have to come out of the moon to understand the moon exactly what moon doing yeah what's the exact proper if you want to find out the exact property uh, properties of moon yeah do you understand that so, they're actually creating yeah, a vacuum yeah so but what I'm trying to say is what were if you're trying to now you are trying to understand before the universe so you cannot end of the day you won't be able to understand it completely okay. by doing an experiment within the universe yeah but you can imitate you can you can do it in a certain level yeah mm -hmm. that's only they're trying to do okay so my, my my point is this one even if they are successful that doesn't mean that's accurate yeah yeah so my, my point is this one Mm -hmm. right, sorry, sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah. See you later, by the way. <laughs> right. So this, is, even if you look at, even if you look at uh, any uh, quantum gravity equations, yeah. Yeah. The the gravity, uh, you know, the gravity constant is already there. Yeah. So that constant is already dependent on, on time and space. Okay. So yeah? what, what, what so I would like to do, yeah, is is the, get back the on. The problem. Go ahead. We, the problem in here, whatever you do, you're gonna come in a circle because. The, any constant in physics, if there's one constant related to uh, time and space uh, within the, you know, within the, uh, in this, if there's any constant in this, in this, uh, any constant in the, in any equation, mm -hmm. we can interrelate somehow, mm -hmm. and because of one constant is already related to time and space, yep. then that means all the constant can be related directly or indirectly to time and space that means that uh, you know all the constant within the within the universe are dependent on time and space okay now whatever you do on this matter it can't be independent on time and, that it simply we cannot understand we can you know by the by universal definition yeah mm -hmm. universal theories and laws mm -hmm. we won't be able to analyze a, an energy or whatsoever existed mm. before the Big Bang. That's my point. Okay, no problem. Yeah? No problem. Right? So, in that case, my question is this one. The energy before the Big Bang can't be energy, as you said. The because energy before our the Big Bang of energy cannot be is, energy. Must be, in, must be independent on time and space. Yeah? So, the energy before the Big Bang can't be energy. It should be something else. The energy that is before the Big Bang cannot be energy, it must be something else. Yeah. That don't make any sense, but um, let me just, let me walk with you, let me walk with you. Let's, yeah, just, yeah, let's yeah. just say it makes sense, yeah. okay? What is the point, what's the final point that the you're point trying you to get know. to? The, you don't know that one, yeah? So that means you are agreeing, you, you, you know, uh, the, the atheists actually, divert, the atheists and, and religious people mm -hmm. diverting from this point. The atheists say energy existed before the Big Bang. So that means it's wrong. Now, the next point, it can be God or it could be something else. That's the only choice, yeah? It can't be energy. That, that's what so basically, okay, so now I'm, I'm seeing. I'll put it that you're trying to rule out that energy is not the cause of everything to come into existence. Exactly. And then you want to uh, posit that it's actually God that is I, I the cause. I didn't say that one. Okay. Because, you know, uh, I, I'm saying by definition of the God in Islam, this entity can be reconciled with the concept of God in Islam. That's what I'm saying. So, it can be only true with the Islamic court, Islamic concept of God. Okay, so th now I think I finally get what you're trying yeah. to say. Basically, um, if we are to um, take on the scientific uh, model, yeah. okay, um, and find out what exactly caused the Big Bang, it is only left down to one uh, theory, which is Allah. It's yeah. the only uh, rational um, 
by definition in Islam. In Islam. Th yeah, that's the only thing that we can reconcile. It could be many more, but because Allah said, you know, there's 99 attributes of Allah. Yeah. So that's that's completely so different. Yeah. That's completely different from my argument. Yeah. So basically, because of your definition but, of yeah. Allah, that Allah is one. That he is, um, you know, Samad. Samad doesn't mean um, without beginning, without end, though, by the way, just to let you know. Um, because he's Samad, and that because, well, we're leaving out that he neither begets nor was he begotten. That's and we're saying point, that yeah. there's nothing like unto him. Yeah. Um, basically, that fits into exactly what is what caused the Big Bang. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. And that's, does, that's more or less. That's more or less does yeah. that honestly make sense to you? Yeah. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Take time, take time, take time, yeah. take time. I want you to take time with me, okay? Yeah, yeah, I want you to take you time know, with me. It's, it's, it's a matter of, you know, okay. for me, it's a matter of my life after my death. Yeah? So now, so, think about this, think about yeah, this, yeah, okay? Yeah, I'm, okay? I'm not trying to um, disrespect your, your, your God or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. I just wanted to make you understand that yeah. how, how do you come to that conclusion? Let's go through the process. Like yeah. in school, we had mathematics yeah. and we had something of like putting down, showing out your working outs of yeah. how you came to that conclusion, basically. So basically, Allah says, yeah, yeah. he is a had, he, yeah. he is a thing, yeah. a, a one, basically. Yeah? yeah, not one, but he is a thing, basically, a oneness yeah? yeah, or a one. So how does that, how did you say in your mind that because the yeah. Big Bang yeah. um, must have a cause, yeah. that whatever it is, is yeah. a one? How did you come to that conclusion? Because, uh, this, you know, this is my concept, yeah? Uh, I don't know what some uh, Islamic scholars might have a different explanation of uh -huh. this one, yeah? This is my personal concept. And by the way, I'm not an Islamic scholar. Yeah. yeah. So this is my understanding of, of God, uh -huh. yeah? Um, if you take, like, the space into consideration, like I already explained to you, uh -huh. the space, only space can separate things. Okay. Now, according to science, the concept of space and the concept of time came into existence at the Big Bang, right? Okay. So that means before the Big Bang, there was no concept of space. Yeah. Okay. Now, if there is no space, if there is an entity before the Big Bang, yeah. then it must be unique because there was no concept of space. Okay, so now the question is, yeah, why did you come to it being one then? Just one. Why did you come to it being Ahad, one? The, a one, yeah, this like is how? A, this like why? Why couldn't? Why yeah. couldn't it be two? Why couldn't it be a three? It why couldn't it be? Three why couldn't no it be a four? Why there couldn't it be a five? This, this is actually a scientific explanation. Okay, perfect, yeah. perfect. For me personally, I have a different reason to believe. Yeah, perfect. Because I believe Quran is a perfect miracle. Yeah? So perfect. You're so saying because that's because my, my reason, because there was no um, space and so forth. This is a scientific explanation. Because there was I don't have to do anyway. Because there was no space and so forth. Yeah, there was a one basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. only that one could have existed. Right. Basically, yeah. Now. Yeah? Afterwards, you now said that um, Samad, Samad doesn't mean um, without beginning. Samad, it's eternally. It, oh, no, it doesn't mean that. It, it says. It doesn't mean that though. It says uh, Allah eternally the thought of all. I, I hear you, but it doesn't yeah. mean, Samad doesn't mean that. There is various different breakdowns of what Samad means and it doesn't actually uh, yeah, mean okay. that what, at all. What so, does it mean for so, you then? So let's, let's just continue because yeah. that's, that's going to be a technical, t technical one. We will literally have to break down what the scholars in the past yeah. and what the um, Arabic linguists actually had to say about the word Samad, okay? okay yeah. Then afterwards, you know, you skipped past the um, he never begets nor was he begotten. Yeah, you know, that's relevant in, in our topic. Okay, by the way. Yeah. so basically, so far we've got he's one yeah. and that he, he, there is nothing like him. Yeah, There's nothing like him. That, so basically, yeah. you're saying that the cause of the Big Bang yeah. was a one mm -hmm. and that who was nothing like him. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling as to how you came to that, con how you came to that conclusion. Okay, there's I'm nothing failing. like him means, uh, that's the second point in, in, the big, you know, in the Big Bang, it says the uh, time and space came into exist uh, uh -huh. existence uh -huh. at the same time, yeah? Yep. So because of the space came into existence, mm -hmm. along with the time, mm -hmm. human brains cannot comprehend anything without time and space. That's the universal fact anyway. Would you have any problem with that statement? Because otherwise, if you have a problem with that one, then you have to give me something that we can think of without time and space. Okay. So obviously, this is scientists say that one. There is nothing that human brain cannot, you know, we cannot comprehend anything without time and space. It could be either related to time or space or both. Yeah. Okay. So let me, let me, no. let me cut, because I, um, I want to cut it short real yeah. quickly because yeah. I'm getting Go cold. Yeah. Yeah. So what I wanted to say to you is, yeah, um, 
I could go down this, this this way of thinking with you, but I'd rather just cut it short because, yeah, yeah. to be honest with you, we, we I don't. Do I, another time, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I really just don't think it makes any sense because if we look at the Islamic narrative well, of, of you, Allah, let me just that finish. Make sense to you, let me then, finish. Uh, tell me what does let it me, make sense to you? Let me finish. What doesn't actually make sense is the fact that you're saying that Allah existed, yeah, as a unique thing, as one, without time and without space. Yeah. But if we go into the Islamic. Um, uh, uh, literature yeah. or even even Muslims who actually follow a particular um, uh, standard or methodology yeah they never tell no, talk well, let, me, let, me fin let me finish yeah, let me finish yeah. let me finish Definitely. because I know you're trying to co in, um, you know reconcile it with what yeah. science is I'm actually not saying this is exactly right yeah I'm not no, saying this no problem no. right and this this is 100% right in Islam no yeah. problem no problem let me let me finish let me finish Islam let me finish let me finish let me finish so this is what I'm gonna say to you is yeah number one we're talking about time and space okay yeah. so um, we fully understand that Allah yeah. Um, operates with inside of a time, of a space and a time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Number one, he has a throne. Okay. This is a space. Quran says it. Yeah. Yep. So the um, throne that we cannot. Let me finish. 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 Yeah. Okay. On, just, yeah. just have Go some on. a bit of patience with okay. me. Yeah? I'll, I'll so you talk. you're yeah. talking about um, space yeah. and that Allah doesn't have a space, but yet we know that He actually occupies a particular space according to the Quranic um, narrative. It mm -hmm. talks about Allah actually. Um, Allah actually ha being upon a throne mm -hmm. um, or hovering abo above a throne, whichever one. Some people say istawa means to establish oneself, i.e. to sit down on a throne. Others say it's to actually hover above a throne. So yeah. there seems to be a location, a locale that is actually taking place, which is a space. It also talks about Allah being above the seven heavens. Okay, Again, that's another space itself. It also talks about Allah operating with inside of time because he simply writes or he causes things to write. Mm -hmm. He simply says beats to certain things, meaning there must be a time and a space in order for that to actually occur. It talks about Allah actually forming man with his own hands, mm -hmm. i.e. operating with inside of a time and a space because man came about being in ter in ter in ter inside a time and a space. It also talks about Muhammad, peace be upon him, actually um, going up on his Isra wa Miraj um, into the seven heavens or above the seven heavens. Gabriel, Jibreel wasn't allowed to go past a certain point, the Sidra uh, Muntaha or whatever the case is, but uh, Allah was there speaking with him and actually um, uh, negotiating the amount of um, uh, negotiating the amount of actual uh, salat he's to do. So to me, um, your definition of Allah um, or your your um, understanding of Allah inside of a scientific paradigm doesn't exactly reconcile with what the Islamic text is actually saying. So um, that's why I'm going to stop it right there. But if you wanted to continue, okay, yeah, let, I would let, love. Let yeah, me, I'm, 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 I'm going to allow you. I'm going to allow you. I would love for you to do. Yeah, is next time we speak. I love having dialogues with you. It's no problem. Next time we speak, actually have like um you know some notes, some paper, or a piece of paper that we can actually go through, and then we can actually like do some research and learn together. I think that would be much more beneficial for us. Yeah. Okay, so let, let me let me uh, uh, give replay on that one. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, in, in, if you go to Quran, uh, yeah. it does say that when Allah, you know, sitting on the throne, uh, yeah. except you know, like Allah have uh, have a watch, you know, yeah. like, watch, you know, watch Allah, something like that. Yeah. yeah? So now the point is this one: you cannot Quran also says, you know, like I said, you know, there's nothing like Him. So you cannot compare like something universal to Allah's face or Allah's throne. Yeah. Yeah. So. Allah is trying to explain which is which you can you know which is an understandable way that yeah. you can comprehend. Yeah. So if Allah has a throne, yeah. He must have a throne. Yeah. Yeah. But that not gonna be understandable like you believe a throne. Okay. Yeah. 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 Does that make sense to you? Yeah. yeah. So just like that one, eh, what you hold whatsoever. Yeah. So Allah has something, but in order to we to understand, mm -hmm. He has something, but we cannot. We can only comprehend. Okay, he have a watch, but yeah. we don't know exactly how does it look like. Yeah. <laughs> because Allah says, you know, uh, there's nothing like him. Yeah. So there's nothing like him. He have a face, but we don't know how how is that. Yeah. Okay. So, but you do realize that um, you have a face, and nobody else has a face yeah. like you. So that face can be, which is. You do realize that we also have like um, you know yeah. fingers and fingerprints, right? Exactly. And nobody shares our finger or fingerprints as well. Fingerprints as well, right? Yeah. So, but anyways, um, you know, it's yeah, been a good. It must one. be, you know, it must be, like, uh, it must be. If 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 I'm right with the time and space continent, it must be uh, uh, independent on time and space. That means we cannot comprehend his face or his sign whatsoever. But we believe, because mm -hmm. Quran said it, mm -hmm. we believe he, Allah must have a, a face and and. Okay. And hands. So is Allah beyond time and space, or does he operate in time and space? 
he must be out of the space and continent because he don't need space. Okay, but That's does he operate? In does he operate inside of time and space? Sorry. Does he operate inside of time and space? No, outside. Okay. Outside. Yeah, we believe so. Because no you know, problem. that's why you know Allah, Allah doesn't have a tent, you know, uh, because Allah know everything simply means, yeah. No. We, the, we are in time and space continent, yeah. Okay. But you, so, you, let me just stop you there because you do realize that. I have to at this point, yeah. You do, you do realize. Just ask me another question. You, let me you, finish you, this you, point. Oh, go ahead. Finish yeah. the point. Uh, Allah, uh, Allah is out of the space and time continent. Yeah. If if Allah is out of uh, time and space continent, yeah. Yeah. Allah doesn't have future. Or past or present. Okay. Yeah. So Allah can. That means you know Allah said Allah know everything. Yeah. Okay. So that means uh, Allah. It's easy for Allah to see that one because you know He's out outside the time and space. So He can simply as we see our present. Allah can see the present and the past and the future. No. Because no problem. He's outside no problem. The time. Earlier when I asked you if He operates oh, yeah. inside in the time and space. Yep. Yeah. Um, I made mention that Allah is where. If you ask any Muslim, they would have to say to you He's above. He's thrown above the seven heavens. Exactly, right. Exactly. That's but Stop, 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 says, stop, yeah. stop. We also acknowledge that he says with inside of the Hadith culture as well, yeah, yeah. that Allah on yeah. the third part of the night, where does he actually descend to? Sorry? Sorry? Where does he descend to? Allah descend to? Yeah. It's Arshi Samawati Well, that's what it says. Okay, he ascends to the lowest heavens. Lowest heavens. Yeah. To the lowest heavens. Yeah, that so could therefore, be, you know, my brother. So I therefore, wanted to meet you, brother. <laughs> we'll talk. You you're famous, man. We'll talk, we'll talk, we'll talk. So therefore, yeah, yeah we would, um, he, yeah. he operates. Lowest heavens. Stop, stop, yeah, stop, stop. Yeah. He yeah. operates within inside of time and space. Because if he's above the seven heavens and he's able to descend. Outside the space. If he's able to descend. Outside if he's, if he's yeah. able to descend to the lowest heaven, which is the first heavens, therefore, he operates within inside of time and space. Why? Stop. should be? Because. How can you say how can it be? It can be different as well. That's how, what I'm how? He's inside of time okay. and space. No. We have the time and space, yeah? And there must be something else. Okay, let me, time let, and space. Let, me, let me make it clear to you, okay? Yeah, yeah, go it on. says there is a question, there, there is actually a statement that's yeah. been proposed by yeah. um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, yeah? yeah. He says, at the, at the, sorry, at the third part of the night, yeah. third part of the night is to yeah. do with time, full stop. Yeah. Yep. So we're dealing that's with time. For us. That's for us. We're dealing with time right now. Yeah. Allah, uh, hold on, hold on. let me finish, yeah. let me finish. So, Allah descends, yeah. descends yeah. from seventh heaven all the way down, six, five, four, three, two, one, yeah. to the lowest heaven, the dunya, this heaven right now, yeah. okay? Yeah. And if you give dua to him or pray to him, okay, yeah. he will answer those prayers, right? Yeah. So therefore, he's operating with inside of time, number one, we make mention of, no, and that's space. That's what, that's, that can be wrong, that's what I'm saying. Because, okay. no, the point is this one, yeah? If he descends, that yeah. means he's going to come to our time and space. It, it doesn't mean that coming down but it doesn't mean okay let me let me let me do one better for you then yeah. okay yeah. Allah yes. says Allah says in his Quran again yeah? yeah Allah says in his Quran yeah. that he made Adam yeah. yeah with his own two two hands yeah is he operating in time and space might not be never mind can, can never be mind. cannot be never yeah. mind never mind it, never mind we'll have we'll have a further conversation we don't know that's 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 a lot did it explain in the Quran? We know things that which is explained in the Quran exactly. Okay, yeah. inshallah, we'll have a conversation next time because I want to just circulate around yeah. and we, we could have another one. No, we could have another one. We could have another one. Yeah. Right, thank you. All right, my brother. Love.